It's about us and it's about secrets that are going to get us ahead in our world, in our lives, and not just business. But don't tell anyone that. Shh. Good business content secretly hidden with all kinds of other stuff too. Don't tell anybody. Shh, don't tell anyone I'm watching the secret business show because it's shh. Well, I'm working with amateurs here. Hey, I'm Chris Brogan. After a long time with a hiatus of me trying to figure out what I'm going to do, I've relaunched the secret show. Shh. Don't tell anybody I've done it. You're not even supposed to tell people when you relaunch things. You're never supposed to apologize for when you know things have gone bad or when you've had some time away because you have to figure it out. But I'll tell you what I did different. I got my friends at the Pulse Network to help me actually produce and edit the show because in this way I can get it out to you a lot more regularly. So you'll see some changes in how we do the show, but it's going to be all for the better. So welcome back to The Secret Show. We've got a little bit of stuff to cover today. I've got a whole bunch of different things I want to do now with the show too. One is that I want to talk from the intersection of creativity and business. I want to talk a lot more about that because I think that as people are trying to figure out how to build their platform, they're trying to get some more reach and exposure. How are they going to do that? And I wanted to talk to different creative people, different business people, and just really mix up the show and really get some good stuff going. Good business content secretly hidden with all kinds of other stuff too. Shh. One quick thing I want to say is that I'm really grateful to add on a wonderful sponsor and a longtime partner and client of mine back and forth on different projects, uh, the people at Citrix Online. They make GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, GoToMyPC, all those kinds of things. They're definitely, first off, a great company full of really fun people. I enjoy the people a lot, but the products really help me out a lot. The new GoToMeeting with high-def faces, for example, is a, a really great product. I use that sometimes in my interviews. Sometimes I use other technology as, as the time permits, but uh, thank you so much for being a sponsor and for being part of the landscape here, Citrix Online. You want to learn a little bit more about what they're doing, go to secret.co slash go to and you'll see a little bit more information. So let's get to our first interview. Knock, knock. Who's there? Shh. Welcome back to Shh. I get the great opportunity to talk to a lot of fun people. Veronica Belmont and I have known each other since I was a fan of hers in uh, 2005 or so when she was doing work on the CNET audio podcast, Buzz Out Loud. Veronica did her college days in Boston and became an intern on the show who then became a personality. Uh, she's since gone on to do all kinds of things. She's a uh, host of the uh, Techzilla show on Revision 3. She's uh, also host of The Sword and Laser. She does all kinds of other internet media. She does all kinds of shows, video game shows and all that. This is a pretty fun interview. There's a longer interview if you go to secret.co slash VB and you want to just really seep in all the goodness that is Veronica Belmont. But let's just check out what she has to say. Shh. You know, things did change though. I mean, a lot of our friends got back out of that field. I mean, they, they just really couldn't sustain it or just cho just didn't see where they thought they were going to go. You know, they, they maybe imagine living on an island. And I think of even, you know, Zay Frank, who had the most popular, the, the show was, mm -hmm. everybody watched that. And, and I just feel that a lot of these kinds of people ran off in a direction, but you're just going deeper and deeper into the abyss. So uh, I guess, first off, where do you see it taking you longer term? And then I have a whole other question. <laughs> Um, longer term, I, I mean, I don't really know. I, people ask me all the time if I'm going to do TV or something like that. I mean, maybe if the right opportunity came along, but I've been so busy and so excited about the work I'm doing in the new media space and the online video space that it's, you know, I'm, I'm not starving to death. I'm making a living doing this and it's been a lot of fun. So, so I don't really see the, the need to go to a, the, a different kind of media at this mm -hmm. point. Um, I think if anything, we're we're that next step. We're the people who are creating the content that's going to be around, you know, five years from now. Uh, maybe TV's at the end of its lifeline at this point. Um, I think that's what YouTube is banking on. That's why they're they're enabling content creators to build these channels that people can watch whenever they want. They don't have to wait around for their shows to come on or or you know get things on TiVo or work around the restrictions of something like Hulu or HBO Go. Um, so I, I think we're at the forefront of that right now, and it's just going to keep moving on from there. Yeah, you know, until you mentioned the Sword and Laser was going to go on to Felicia's channel, I mean, I, I understood, and when I saw channels come out, I went, yeah, okay, 
and, and it didn't really have an impact to me. I didn't really feel the way you're, you're, you're the way you're laying it out is sort of like this could be TV next. And I think partly because I lived through 06 and 07 and I, I went to all those same shows with Kara Swisher and everybody and oh, the world's going to change and Justin Can is going to make us all, you know, take videos of each other pooping or whatever. I mean, <laughs> there was just this other old universe there. And I, you know, I think we all bought in and I, I feel like that smells like second coming, but you seem pretty, you know, gung ho on the idea of the channel. I mean, do you think this time there's some legs behind it because of devices? Why do you think it's going to go that way or could go I, that way? Well, I think that finally, you know, advertisers and, and, and companies like YouTube are taking this stuff seriously in terms of putting some money behind it. And I think that's what's really going to bring along the shift is that before, like, yeah, we can do great looking shows on a shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. But if we really want to compete with TV, in a lot of ways, we have to have the ability to, to bring the production to the next level and to make it look like something that is professionally done. And a lot of people don't have the resources to do that on their own. And uh, like myself, for example, like I've always worked with uh, other companies to make content and the yeah. content's always been great. But on my own, I don't know if I could have done it without a budget. And, you know, there's just no way. And so now we have people that we can work with and people that can help promote it and people that can help edit and produce a show. And that's what's enabling us at least to to kind of compete with television. That was Veronica Belmont. If you want to see the whole rest of the interview, you can go to secret.co slash VB. Just one quick point. It's kind of funny how my hair and beard styles and everything change. Sometimes it's because I shot the footage a little earlier. Sometimes it's I change my hairstyle every couple days. Just run with it. I do. Again, you want to find more about Veronica, go to twitter.com slash Veronica and you can start there, I guess, or go to secret.co slash VB and there's the full interview there. Be right back. Welcome back to Shh, The Secret Show. I'm Chris Brogan. I'm your host. It's time now for the weekly UPS store mailbag. I've got all kinds of interesting stuff to cover with you. Uh, first in the music department, in uh, travel, I've got something called Ubi Rock. This little guy, first off, is super heavy and will make almost every uh, TSA agent look through your bag and wonder why you have that is so compact and so heavy. So it's made in such an interesting way. What it is, there's a little tiny triangle that you can stick down on top of a desk or a table or wherever you seem to be. There's a little USB port that connects into your uh, computer and it blows uh, music out through your through the sound part and makes beautiful sounding music out of this tiny little thing. Ubi Rock. I've had a lot of fun taking with th this with me on trips except for the part where I get searched all the time. It's a heck of a device. So go to secret.co slash Ubi Rock and you can check that out a little bit more. Uh, I wanted to show off a phone that I was given by the nice folks at Microsoft Yes, Microsoft. The Nokia Lumia 900, and it's a Windows-based phone. It's running the newest Windows Mobile. Uh, I've got Twitter on there. I've got a whole bunch of different apps. It's kind of neat. What I like about it is it, it's a lot different than the OS, but if you can see, it kind of moves nice and fast. Everything kind of loads up really good. It's, it's, a, it's a really interesting alternative to buying an Apple phone or even an Android phone. I've got to tell you, this Windows Mobile OS has really been surprising me. The thing you're going to argue about or the thing you'll, you'll complain about early on is that there's not a lot of apps on it. There are enough apps right now. There's a Facebook app, there's Twitter, there's most of the things that you're going to do. There's a good uh, GPS. The uh, camera in here is incredible. It's a Carl Zeiss lens on this side here. So it's got a lot of good stuff built in. Oh, and there's two-sided camera like as you're used to in the most modern smartphones. Uh, the Nokia Lumia 900. It's a great phone by Nokia. It, this one I got is on the AT&T network, and it's run really well for me. Um, I've also been able to try it out in uh, overseas, and it worked fine there too. So definitely something to check out if you're maybe tired of your iPhone but not really interested in Android or vice versa. Nokia Lumia 900. You can go to secret.co slash Nokia to check that out just a little bit more. Uh, you know, next up, I've got something that was sent to me. Sometimes when things are sent to me, uh, you can't wait to open them, but you're also scared at the same time. Uh, there was a piece of mail that said to me, Chris, your prostate is in this box. And I thought, hmm. First off, I didn't know that it escaped me. Now it says, hey, Chris Brogan, this is your prostate. And then here it says, being stuck in this box is worse than being crammed in your bowels. Lift up this damn lid. Upon lifting up the damn lid, there is a walnut with an angry face. And I'll play just a tiny bit of this, see if you can hear this. Hey, Chris, so you think you're the king of the fatherhood bloggers, don't you? Well, how about bringing in someone who really knows about fatherhood? Me, your goddamn prostate. I've been working all these years for you and the rest of the dad matic crew. So this angry prostate 
was in my box, and it tells me that it's taking Father's Day hostage. You got to go to zerocancer.org to check out this a little bit. You can go to facebook.com slash zero cancer as well, or you can look for the Twitter hashtag prostate day. This is a really interesting way to get the message out about prostate cancer. Uh, there's an angry walnut uh, screaming to me in a box. Did you know that uh, 28,000 men die of prostate cancer every damn year? Uh, there's a lot more swearing. Um, that's why I'm helping out Zero, a national nonprofit that's fighting for prostate cancer. I think it's pretty cool. I think the way they got the message out was hilarious, and so definitely worth checking out, fellas. Secret.co slash prostate day for you, and we'll check that out. One last thing. The uh, nice folks at Black Irish Publishing sent me a lunchbox. Being that Human Business Works logo is also a lunchbox, I have immediate allegiance. Now, what came in it was a, a couple of books by Stephen Pressfield, uh, a reissue of his book, The War on Art, and then a book that Jacqueline Carley, my girlfriend, told me you must read, which was called Turning Pro. Tap your inner power and create your life's work. Turning Pro is not very long. It is 130 or so pages, and those pages are very uh, brief and shortly read, uh, written. You can read this thing in a couple hours. It is a great book. It is a really changing kind of a book because it really says to you, You've really got to go this route if you want to decide that you're going to amp it up and not just be an amateur anymore. Turning Pro. I highly recommend this book. You're going to hear me talking about it all the time, I think. And I almost didn't read it. Uh, I liked War on Art, but I didn't really like Do the Work, which is kind of a hash on War on Art. And I think that um, if it weren't for Jack telling me to read it, I wouldn't have. And now I'm glad she did because Turning Pro has really uh, lit me right up. Stephen Pressfield, Turning Pro. You can go to secret.co slash turning pro to check out a little bit more on that. And that's what we've got hiding inside the UPS mailbag for this week, the UPS store mailbag for this week. Shh. I get to talk to really interesting people all the time. And I, I think I'd say that I, I intro a lot of my interviews because I'm always amazed at who I get to find. This is a friend that Jack met when we, she was down in Las Vegas at this convention for tea. Uh, we'll talk about that later. And uh, and so doing, she met the authority right now in, in the U.S. or maybe perhaps in the world on tea and tea lore, this man James Norwood Pratt. Turns out he's based in San Francisco. I was out in San Francisco to attend the Inbound Marketing Summit 2012, and I had a chance to go into James and, and Valerie, I believe her name is, their house for tea, and it was a a beautiful experience. Jack and I had the opportunity to ask him some questions and interview him. Again, James Norwood Pratt. Let's just take a look in on what he had to say. What does it take to, to impress you or what does it, you've had so many experiences with tea. What is the thing that you're, is there, first, is there a holy grail that's not yet found for you? And second, barring that, then what? What I love is in many ways, most easily found in the humblest leaf. What I love about tea uh, uh, is perfectly expressed, for instance, in Nilgiri black tea, which is uh, very humble and uh, calls no attention to itself. It's almost self-effacing. Uh, there isn't uh, any uh, flamboyant flavor of some kind to captivate you. And in order to love that Nilgiri black tea, you have to truly love that plant, that leaf. And there it is, unadorned uh, and uh, simple. If you can love that, you love tea. You can always find flamboyantly aromatic uh, oolongs and jasmines and, and teas of every description, which, which are easy to love. Can you love the humblest? Here is the two leaves and a bud that you would pluck for fine plucking if you were going to make most green teas uh, uh, or black tea, uh, oolong, you would pluck more. It would be more like two leaves and a branch. Oh my goodness. You see. But uh, that's because you need the larger leaf for oolong manufacture. But this is 
fine plucking right here, mm -hmm. and most uh, uh, hand plucked teas will use that peco uh, uh, and orange peco leaf. And there's the bud, mm -hmm. which is not yet a real leaf. It hasn't developed its chlorophyll. My goodness. Therefore, when you uh, when you fire it, when you dry it, it's not going to turn brown or mm -hmm. black the way these would once dried. Uh, uh, it'll just be khaki colored. It'll oh. be tawny. And they call it tip because you see, it's the tip end of the growing shoot. That's the business end of the tea bush. All of its nutrients and caffeine and everything, it's sending toward that growing bud. James and Valerie were so nice to have Jack and I into the house for tea. We had a real lot of fun. We got to try out a bunch of different teas and just have quite the conversation. Uh, James Norwood Pratt is probably most known for his absolute authoritative book called The Tea Dictionary. Uh, the thing weighs about 1,000 million pounds. It is $150 to buy. But if you are cuckoo for tea, this is the book to buy. If you're kind of just dipping in or you're not so sure, I would say that this book, which also weighs a million pounds, The Ultimate Tea Lover's Treasury is where you'd start. James Norwood Pratt, is uh, he's collected a bunch of interesting stories. He's a historian, uh, born out of North Carolina, but lived a lot of his life um, in San Francisco, except as he said when he went mad and moved to Europe every now and again, or Asia. Um, tea Lover's Treasury, I found, had a lot of great information, and it's a great way to get yourself thinking about tea and also just appreciating some interesting anecdotal and fun stories. Uh, to find out a little bit more about that, you could go to secret.co slash JNP, for James Norwood Pratt, and you can find out a little bit more. Holy sardine! All right, so we've come to the next to last part of the show, and I wanted to just give you a couple thoughts, as I probably will in every single episode as it comes to me. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is the sense that everyone feels like, because of this world we're in, because you're hearing from people like me, that you have to be on every single social network and that you have to do this and you have to blog and you have to make video. Of course you have to make video. Uh, you get to this point where you believe you've got to do everything and you've got to be just right on and everywhere. You know, I ran into in, in San Francisco, I was having a little trouble getting a taxi to pick us up. Jack and I would be somewhere, we'd try to go somewhere else and we'd take forever. We'd make the phone call to dispatch and it wasn't working. We finally get in the back of one guy's cab and he says, oh, get cabulous. It's like fabulous with a C. Uh, Cabulous is an application that runs on the iPhone and also the Android, and it is basically peer-to-peer. -peer. You say, I'm looking for a ride, and the, the taxi driver says, oh, I'll pick you up. That's it. It cuts out the middleman. There's no dispatcher. I was thinking about it, and this guy does not need to blog. He does not need to tweet. He does not need YouTube videos about how great he is as a taxi driver. He just needed an app. That app gave him more business than he had before and really helped him. I feel this way about a lot of the things that we do. I feel that you don't necessarily need to be on Facebook if you don't want to. You don't have to be on Twitter if you don't want to. Seth Godin is doing just fine without Twitter still. Uh, you can choose not to be on LinkedIn. That was my choice. I'm out. Um, wherever you decide you want to be or don't want to be, just use the tools that are going to help you with your business and that are going to help you tell the story you want to tell and to help you create what you want to share with people. Do that where you want to do it. It doesn't, you just don't worry that you're, you know, not checking a box because everyone else said you should do it. For every time there's a rule that I or anybody else come up with, there's somebody breaking the rule that's doing just great. So maybe that's you in this particular case. And that's one to grow on. Shh. All right, so this is now the uh, produced by the nice folks at the Pulse Network version of The Secret Show. We talked a little bit about uh, everything in the new show. Veronica Belmont came on and gave us a little bit to think about. We had uh, JNP, as I, everyone seems to call him, James Norwood Pratt, did a little bit in the UPS store mailbag, and we've got some uh, more information about where you don't or do have to spend your time. So that's some stuff to look at. I'm Chris Brogan. Thanks for tuning in to Shh, The Secret Show. It's about us, and it's about secrets that are going to get us ahead in our world, in our lives, and not just business. But don't tell anyone that. Shh. Good business content secretly hidden with all kinds of other stuff, too. Don't tell anybody. Shh, don't tell anyone I'm watching the secret business show because it's shh.
I'm working with amateurs here. And that's one to grow on.